I am guessing that you probably started it with a difference because it was pi over 12. Okay? And I'm guessing that you went with the cosine of pi over 4 minus pi over 6. Guessing a majority of you went with that one. Yes? Okay. Is that the only one that you could have used? No. And actually, pi over 12 is 15 degrees. So, and since all of these, these three main points here in quadrant one are all separated by 15 degrees, you could have done that one, or you could have done pi over 3 minus pi over 4, or you could have done 3 pi over 4 minus 2 pi over 3, or 5 pi over 6 minus 3 pi over 4, because those are all separated on the unit circle by 15 degrees. Okay? Or 11 pi over 6 minus 7 pi over 4, or so on and so forth. Okay? Bunch of different ones. Okay? Cosine formula then is number, I want to say 18. Yep, 18 on your unit circle. So that is going to be cosine of pi over 4 times the cosine of pi over 6. And then it is opposite. So that would be plus sine of pi over 4 sine of pi over 6. Okay. Cosine at pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. The cosine at pi over 6 is the square root of 3 over 2. Sine at pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. Sine at pi over 6 is one half. So those become the square root of 6 over 4 and the square root of 2 over 4. So that gives me the cosine of pi over 12 is the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 all over 4. Okay. Then I had asked you to also do that by doing a difference. Okay. So I could have gone 3 pi over 12, which is my pi over 4, plus negative 2 pi over 12, which is really 11 pi over 12. 6, because it's really negative pi over 6, and the angle negative pi over 6 is really 11 pi over 6. Okay. So then that one would have been the cosine of pi over 4 times the cosine of 11 pi over 6. Now minus, because the signs are opposite, the sine of pi over 4 times the sine of 11 pi over 6, which cosine at pi over 4 is still the square root of 2 over 2. The cosine at 11 pi over 6 is still the square root of 3 over 2 minus sine at pi over 4 is still square root 2 over 2. Sine at 11 pi over 6 is negative 1 half. So when I multiply those right two together, here, well, here, left two, I get the square root of 6 over 4. Over here, I get minus a negative square root of 2 over 4, which I could just write as plus minus a negative. We call that addition. And so then I'm back on track. What's up? Can you do 8 pi over 12 plus 5 pi over 
No, that simplifies to pi over 2. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's not subtraction, it's division. Yeah. Yeah, that's pi over 2. So, no. Okay. Yep. But you could have done, um, I mean, you could have done a lot of different things there, too, you know. But one of them would have to be negative in this case. Okay? And then, so here, we would again get the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 all over 4. Okay? We haven't done a tangent one yet, so let's do a tangent one. Okay? So that's formula number 20 here now. So what two values of angles would be either add or subtract to be 11 pi over 12? I'm thinking 8 pi over 12 plus 3 pi over 12. Adds to be 11 pi over 12, yes? The kicker is, is do those reduce? That's what I look for. When I'm going through these and I'm looking at, okay, over 12, I'm definitely going to avoid 5. Well, I'm definitely going to avoid 1, 5, 7 and 11 are the ones that I want to avoid. Okay? Because those don't reduce over 12. 2, 3, 4, all over 12 reduce down. Okay? 6, 8, 9, 10 all reduce over 12. Okay? The kicker is the reducing. Okay? Because this is really 2 pi over 3 and pi over 4. So this becomes the tangent of 2 pi over 3 plus pi over 4. Give me another possible pair of angles that I could have used. to get me 11 pi over 12. Give me another possible pair. Yep. Because then this would have been 3 pi over 4 and pi over 6. Both of those would also have worked, too. Okay. Or I could have done a subtraction, too. I could have done 15 pi over 12 minus pi, or 4 pi over 12. Okay. Either way. Okay. So, my formula then becomes, I have the tangent of 2 pi over 3, same sign, plus the tangent of pi over 4, all over 1, change the sign, tangent of 2 pi over 3 times the tangent of pi over 4. Okay, tangent at 2 pi over 3. Negative square root of 3. Again, if you've forgotten on your unit circles in quadrant number 1, okay, we have outside the um, ordered pair is the value of the tangents. Okay? And so that you would just, you know, take quadrant 1 and quadrant 3, they're positives, and quadrant 2 and 4, they're negatives. Yes. 
but you don't get it in that form. Okay? You get it in the how we did it first semester half sheet form. So tangent of 2 pi over 3 is negative square root of 3. Tangent of pi over 4. 1. So we have that, okay, which becomes... Because we've got minus negative square root of 3 in there. So that becomes positive square root of 3 on the bottom. Okay? And I would accept that as an answer. Preferably, though, I mean, just to make it look nice and pretty, the tangent of 11 pi over 12 would be 1 minus the square root of 3 all over 1 plus the square root of 3. Okay? I'm... A traditionalist, I like my radicals to come last. Okay? But that's just me. I would accept either one of those last two lines. Okay? And Mrs. Hill and I talked, um, actually Monday night we talked about this particular problem. We decided that we're okay with that as an answer. You don't need to rationalize the denominator okay? in the tangent ones. Because it only shows up in the tangent one. You don't have to rationalize that denominator. Okay. Now, the last thing that we need to talk about is we need to work on these three formulas, but going the other way. Okay. So here's what I look at. I look at two things at the start of these reverse problems. The first thing I look at is I look at the grouping here. Okay. If it's cosine, cosine, that means it's cosine. If it's cosine, sine, that means it's sine. And if it's a fraction, okay, that means it's tangent. Okay. That's what I look at. That's the first thing I look at. Okay. The second thing that I look at is I look at that operation going on in there. Okay, so these two together told me that it's a cosine function. So because it's a cosine function and the middle sign is opposite or the operation is opposite in cosine function, that to me says that this is going to become some kind of a cosine function, and it's going to be minus in between. Okay? And so it's going to be 42 degrees minus 12 degrees. 42 minus 12 is 30, so the answer here would be the cosine of 30 degrees. Okay. First you look at the pattern of the functions, then you look at the telltale operation. And the telltale operation is usually the first the very first addition or subtraction symbol. Okay? What I would like you to do now is I would like you to do those two problems. Simplify those two. So my first peak is at those two, and those two tell me that it is a sine function. Next peak is at this one. Sine, is it straight up or is it opposite? Straight up, so that means that that's going to be plus in there. So 7y plus 3y is going to give me the sine of 10y. 
Agree? Yes, on a pet, if you can just do that stack them up in our head, do we have to like do the work? Or can we just write down the sign ten more? You can just write down the sign ten more. Mm-hmm. Okay. Alright. Last one. Only one that uses tangent is tangent. So we're definitely going to be oops. Definitely going to be tangent. Whoa, 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 what's going on here? Goofy things, close that, get back here. Okay. Telltale sign is this one in tangent. Top one, the numerator sign, is it straight up or is it opposite? It's straight up, okay? So that means it's going to be a subtraction. And so that's going to be 3b minus 2b. So that gives us the tangent of b. Yes? Good, good times. Yeah.